Energizing your soul through the inspired Word of God, this is your daily devotional reading. Our Daily Bread, February 28th. Bear trials with patience and joy. I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, He kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for His own. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Bear trials with patience and joy. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 17 and 18. Christians should be careful that they keep their heart with all diligence. They should cultivate a love for meditation, and cherish a spirit of devotion. Many seem to begrudge moments spent in meditation and the searching of the scriptures and prayer as though the time thus occupied was lost. I wish you could all view these things in the light God would have you, for you would then make the kingdom of heaven of the first importance. To keep your heart in heaven will give vigor to all your graces and put life into all your duties. To discipline the mind to dwell upon heavenly things will put life and earnestness into all our endeavors. Our efforts are languid, and we run the Christian race slowly and manifest indolence and sloth because we so little value the heavenly prize. We are dwarfs in spiritual attainments. It is the privilege and duty of the Christian to be increasing in the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. As exercise increases the appetite and gives strength and healthy vigor to the body, so will devotional exercises bring an increase of grace and spiritual vigor. The affection should center upon God. Contemplate His greatness, His mercy and excellences, Let his goodness and love and perfection of character captivate your heart. Converse upon his divine charms and the heavenly mansions he is preparing for the faithful. He whose conversation is in heaven is the most profitable Christian to all around him. His words are useful and refreshing. They have a transforming power upon those who hear them and will melt and subdue the soul. We allow the trials and sorrows of earth to so overcome us that we have but little strength to press through the clouds of darkness to the eternal reward. The contemplation of heavenly things will revive our drooping faith, increase our courage and perseverance, and render our trials and sufferings far more easy. It will enable us to bear them with patience and joy, says Paul, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. When a Christian draws his life from above and strengthens his soul with the contemplation of things that are unseen, 
God is honored because he takes him at his word. He believes the promise and it is accounted unto him for righteousness. If such an amount of time is required to make preparations for the wants of the body for this short life, how much time do you consider will be required for spiritual exercises in order to perfect Christian character, that you may be counted worthy of the better life, which is eternal? Do you think a fitness for a pure and holy heaven comes along naturally without special effort on your part? Great preparation has been made by our heavenly king in our father's house for the saints of God, and a great preparation have we to make to attain purity of character and a moral fitness for the home of sacred bliss to which we shall be introduced if we are found worthy. Therefore, let us aspire after the heavenly life. Withdraw your thoughts from worldly things, for they will benumb your affections and pollute your soul. Learn daily of him who has invited you to be meek and lowly, and you will find rest to your soul. Christ is our consolation and our strength. We are not required to labor or to employ our thoughts more than we now do, but to change the current of these thoughts and labors and employ as many serious thoughts every day upon our salvation and how we may show ourselves approved unto God and have our conversation upon his excellent glory and the life to come as we now devote to worldly affairs and things that are of no profit. A transformation is required of us, a renewing of the mind that we may prove what is that good an acceptable and perfect will of God. This passage was taken from the Review and Herald, March 29, 1870. Our Daily Bread, February 28th. I encourage you to be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Thank you for listening and be sure to join us tomorrow for your daily devotional reading.